Some examples. If a system has 30 joules of energy, heat energy that is, added to it, and it does 20 joules of work, what's the change in its internal energy? So as always in physics, we write down the variables that we want to calculate and the variables that we have. So we're adding heat, so it's a positive 30 joules. The work is done by the system, 20 joules. So let's look at the two ways that we can look at this. From a chemistry perspective, we can say the change of energy is equal to heat plus the work done on the system. So here, the heat was 30 joules. And this is work done by the system, so we take away 20, which gives us an, an overall increase of internal energy of 20, of 10 joules rather. 30 plus negative 20 gives us 10 joules. Alternatively, we can look from a physics perspective, work done by the system. Here our equation is delta U equals Q take W. So the heat added is 30 joules. And now the work done by the system, we're taking away 20 joules by the system. Um, and that leaves us with a change of internal energy of 10 joules. Example number two. If a system has 50 joules of heat added to it and it does 70 joules of work, what's the change of its internal energy? Again, we set out our unknown. We write down the variables that we do have. The heat added is 50 joules and the work done by the system is 70 joules. Again, look, look at this problem from a chemistry perspective or a VCAA study design. Delta U equals Q plus W. So the heat added is 50 and the work done by the system is 70. So when we look at this one, this is using the W as work done on the system. So it goes in as a negative 70. So in total, the change in internal energy is minus 20 or rather a decrease of 20 joules of internal energy. Option two, the same problem looking at it from a physics perspective. Delta U equals Q, take W where W is the work done by the system. So there is heat added of 50 joules minus the work done by the system which was 70. 50 takes 70 gives me minus 20. So in total the internal energy has been decreased by 20 joules. Example three, if a system has 30 joules of heat added to it, and the total change in its internal energy is 30 joules, how much work does it do? We write down our unknown, and we write down our variables that we know. Let's look at this from a chemistry perspective. Delta U equals Q plus W. So the change in energy is 30. Internal energy is 30 joules, as stated here. There's heat added of 30, so that goes in as plus 30, and we want to know what the W is. What is the work done on the system? Well, 30 plus 30 equals zero, so no work has been done on the system. Alternatively, from a physics perspective, delta U equals Q take W. Okay, so the change in internal energy is 30, the heat added is 30, and the W, the work done by the system, is zero. So over here, there's no work done on the system, and there's no work done by the system system is not contributing to the change in internal energy. Our final example, if a system does 30 joules of work and the internal energy is 20 joules less than before, what is the heat added to the system? So added heat equals question mark, the work done by the system was 30 joules and the change in internal energy, because it's less, is now minus 20 joules. Option one, from a chemistry's perspective, delta U equals Q plus W. So the change in internal energy is minus 20. Q, we're trying to calculate, remains as the unknown variable. Plus work done on the system. Well, it's work done by the system. So the 30 goes in as a negative when we're talking about on the system. So in total, if I've got negative 20 equals Q plus negative 30, Q must have been 10 joules. So we know that 10 joules of heat is added to the system. Now finally, let's compare this from a physics equation perspective. Delta U equals Q take W, where W is the work done by the system rather than on the system. So the change in internal energy, it was a drop or a negative 20 joules. Q is our unknown, and this time we're taking away the work done by the system. We're taking away 30. So again, our simple mathematics states that there must be 10 joules of heat added to the system. I hope these examples and the visual representation of the first law of thermodynamics has helped you grasp the concept or at least start thinking about how best to approach these problems. As I said, these two approaches from a chemistry and a physics perspective only differ by the statement of work done on the system and work done by the system. If you apply and substitute the information incorrectly, 
you'll have no problems whatsoever. Thanks for watching this video and work hard, enjoy your physics.